Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I am back from Sweden, back in my home office in Portland, Oregon, and um, unfortunately working on my own today. I really had a great time pairing with uh, Roy Oshrove and Kim Grossman, but um, unfortunately they couldn't come with me back to Portland, so um, it's just me today. So when we left off, uh, I had finished working with Kim, and we had gotten some very nice work done on the forecast table. So we've got a table here that works very well. It's got some nice alternating colors. It does what we need. And now I want to just continue doing polish. Um, I've talked in the past about having cycles of expansion and contraction. And I think right now this is more of a contraction cycle where I want to do just a bunch of cleanup. So I think that's going to be the focus for today's episode. Uh, first thing I notice is some sort of warning there. Let's clean that up. Um, Let's take a look at our scratch pad. I, I think we're done with forecast table, at least for now. I don't see anything else in here that needs changing. I might want to clean up some of the duplication in the tests, but, you know, I think that's pretty solid for now, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, I think it's unfortunate that I never did get a chance to go into details on different approaches to testing with either Kim or Roy. Um, but it just uh, didn't work out in terms of timing. So hopefully another time. All right, so looking at the scratch pad, uh, let's see. Well, we've got some programmatic stuff going on. Um, I do have the approvals, new approvals framework from Llewellyn, but this the, um, the direct testing of the swing code works so well that I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. I mean, it's fast. It is... Um, it's reliable, and uh, it doesn't, uh, and it's not hard. I mean, it's pretty easy. So I'm really liking it, and um, I don't think I want to change that. Uh, so just to, when I say it's fast, let's see how fast it actually is. Our forecast table test, all the tests in there, and there are four tests, they take all of three-tenths of a second. That's a little bit slow, actually. I mean, uh, modern tests should run a rate of easily more than 100 per second. Uh, so three-tenths of a second is a little bit slow, but I noticed that the first one takes a lot of time, and then after that, it's much, much faster. Um, so I think what's happening is swing is being loaded in or something like that. Anyway, I I'm, I'm very happy with these tests. These are great tests, and uh, they're very fast. I don't think the approvals framework can best that because it's actually writing out to disk. And at any rate, the tests speak directly to what's happening, which again is uh, something I'm, I'm very happy with. So I unfortunately am not going to look any further at the, at the approvals framework, uh, at least not in the context of these videos, uh, because the swing stuff worked out so well. So pretty much settled on that. Don't have to worry about the frame not closing anymore because uh, thanks to Roy, I was able to, uh, the two of us were able, we too <laughs> were able to get rid of that, uh, the usage of the frame entirely. So that's taken care of. So um, what do we have left? Uh, moving the spikes into another project would be a good idea. This, I think we're pretty good with this. And I'm going to leave this here. So um, need to move those spikes into a separate project, but you know what? That's not a particularly useful thing for me to do on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and uh, take care of that and be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I actually decided not to split the spikes out into their own project right now, and the reason for that was that um, it has some implica implications for the way Eclipse works and how I want to organize things that I just didn't want to have to deal with right now. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up whatever warning I've got right now. Um, and come back to that one later, maybe much later. At some point I'm going to need to do an automated build. And um, at that point maybe I'll clean things up. So let's take that one out. So that just leaves us... Um, well, I think... I think it's time to move on to something new. So let's take a look at this. 
Well, the obvious next thing to do is something that Kim, uh, Kim Grossman had recommended, which is putting a title on here. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that. I think we can do that in the same way that we have done the uh, alternating rows. And that is to create a little, uh, uh, like we created a forecast table, we can create our own application frame and, um, and make assertions against it. So uh, let's, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work out. So let's just go ahead and try some stuff and we'll learn by doing it. So I'm going to start out by making, let's see, I'll call this an application frame, which is kind of cheesy, but for lack of a better name. And um, make sure we've got everything working. There we go. Okay, so, um, so the application window should have a title. And uh, we'll need one of them. Let's see if we can get the title off of this. We'll wait for Swain to catch up. I don't think you can see on the video, but right now I'm getting an hourglass while, uh, while Swain looks through its long list of names. Yeah, there we go. Get title. So um, Let's just assert that the title is equal to the application frames title. And the title for now will be Boo. We'll come back and change that. Which reminds me, I should double check if I have any other tasks out there. Oh, I do. <laughs> I haven't looked at that, I don't think ever. So, um, okay. Well, we'll come back to that later. Okay, so this should fail because we're not doing a title right now. There we go, expected foo but was nothing. This is really nice and simple, I'm enjoying this. Um, and I see a couple of ways of doing this. One way would be to, um, one way would be to have the constructor set the title uh, but another way would be to override the title method directly, and I'm not sure which one's better. I'm going to take a quick look at the documentation and see what it says. Okay, I'm back. Um, it looks like the simplest way to do this would be to just, you can uh, specify the title on the constructor, so I think the simplest way to do this would be to um, do it this way. Yeah, and there we go. Looks like we've got an issue here. Yeah, serial version ID. Um, so there we go. That should have worked. Now let's go ahead and check our assumptions. Oh, that did not work. Uh, oh, well, of course not, because our, uh, our application isn't using this new application frame yet. So. Oh, that's interesting. So application is a J frame. 
Well, let's have this extend application frame for now. But I think we might be getting close to the point where uh, we're going to want to consider how to do that. So I think that will have worked. Yep, there we go. We've got our title. Um, that's awesome. So next um, is this little thing up in here, up in the corner. That does not work well. Uh, that's a Mac specific thing. We want it to actually have a menu. And um, I think we also need to check that this works uh, on Windows. So, yeah, I think next I'm going to try to take care of this thing here. That's going to take a little research again. So once again, I'm going to pause the video, and I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. Well, I took some time, actually quite a bit of time, looking around at some of the Mac and Java stuff, and it opens a can of worms that I don't really want to get into right now. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and look at some other stuff. Um, the main issue is that I think a lot of the ways to deal with questions of how do we make this work on the Mac, for example, here's my little Mac spike that I was working on. In order to make this change to the correct value, uh, I think what I want to do is it's related to how I bundle the application, and that's something that we haven't gotten to yet. So um, I'm going to come back to that later. So, uh, but one thing we definitely need to do is we need to close the window when the application, or close the application when the window's closed. Right now, if we run the app, and then we close the window, uh, it keeps running. Now, due to the way the Mac works, if I use the quit command, uh, it closes. But I also want it to close when I close the window. That's not very Mac-ish, but um, that's how I want it to work anyway. Uh, because this is going to be a cross-platform app. I do intend, once it's to the point where it's uh, got some bare minimum functionality, I do want to actually uh, write some uh, a build file and package it up and have it so everybody else can use it too, uh, with the caveat that I'm not a financial expert, so don't use this for financial advice. The other thing I saw was that um, the other thing I have on my list to do is to take this and make it not be a frame anymore. But that's stuff to look at some other time. I think we're just about out of time here, and I feel pretty good about at least getting this started and getting the title working. So uh, I'm going to call it good for today. So thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.